Well, just got a package in. This one's gonna be real fun to open because I know exactly what it is. So some of my co-interns got matching badge reels. <laughs> introducing, introducing my new badge reel. This is the theme for all of intern gear. Gotta crack jokes and have fun with it while you can. Coffee. Bag full of scrubs. At 4.30 in the morning. I'm so tired. Today is a Sunday and it is my last 24 hour call for my first surgery rotation. And it's actually my last day on my surgery rotation. I figure there is a lot of mystery regarding what happens on 24 hours and then also what happens afterwards. So let me try to explain. So first and foremost, there are two kind of different types of 24 hours that you do. And they're pretty similar, but differ in the hecticness of the workflow and the amount of responsibility slash the amount of help that you actually have during those shifts. First one is the weekday 24s. You're assigned to a primary team, I am on surgical oncology, and that's kind of your home team. In the weekday, you have all your APPs, your co-interns, your PGY2s, PGY3s, as well as your chiefs, all tackling both the primaries, which are kind of the floor level of care patients, and then the more senior residents are taking care of the consults or the like SICU or ICU level uh, care patients. The APPs are awesome. We have a wonderful, wonderful group of PAs that are just experts in the nitty gritty things, discharges, orders. They're just, they're nailing the things that like I wish I could nail so quickly in my first month of residency, but since I can't, they're doing it just like that. And they're so helpful. They've taught me so much, but you have that help during the week. During the week, there's typically scheduled cases that you or your co-residents will go to, and then you'll take those patients, care for them on the floor post-op. And that would typically be your like five o'clock to 5.30. And then if you're on call, you would just stay when everybody else goes home. And then for us, we're in the call pool with um, thoracic as well as endocrine surgery and breast surgery. And so we would get sign out from each of those individual teams. And then for the night, we would be taking care of surgical oncology, endocrine, thoracic, and breast patients. But at least for that day, like during the daytime, you're only taking care of your kind of like home service patients. So my main concentration was just the surgical oncology patients. On the weekend, however, which is today, at least at the time me recording this, you're kind of alone. You come in at five o'clock, you prep the list and you round with an assigned service. Today it was thoracic for me. You get sign out from the previous night's intern who was taking care of all the services patients. And then you're the one writing all the notes and trying to progress the care of patients on the surgical oncology list, the thoracic list, endocrine, and breast. Without the full team there, it's just you. And like your chief, but like as far as intern level floor work, it's just you. And you're trying to advance the care of patients that like today may have been the first time you found out about them. So it's really different and really difficult trying to answer questions and advance care on patients that you aren't really familiar with at all. Why do we still use these? Basically as a last resort, but usually we have our work phones, but we always have to keep it on us to make sure like if the work phones don't work, we still have a way to get in contact with people. Sometimes when it gets a little too busy, or you just need a breather, the stairwell is your safe place which on 24s can sometimes be frequent. This morning was rough. This morning was really rough. These never get easier. Or at least they don't feel like they do. Oh, 
Oh man. This is the call room for the interns taking Alpha Call, which for our institution is surgical oncology, endocrine surgery, as well as thoracic surgery. So when you're covering nights, you do have this room available. I haven't really been using it probably as much as I should be. First night, I was very much up off of pure adrenaline. Subsequent nights have been a little bit tougher. So welcome to the Alpha Call intern call room, or at least for this video, uh, the studio, I guess. But also, yeah, welcome to the uh, call room. It's not anything special. I mean, computer, chair, actually really comfy bed, um, closet stuff, like it's got sprays to make sure you're clean and like fresh. Extra white coats. I don't know, you're not expecting a five-star hotel. It's just, it's your own private place to <sighs> decompress. Insert SpongeBob theme of like 12 hours later. Oh, what a view. That's kind of cool. I'm still tired. And I'm still here. And will be. For the next eight or nine more hours. Delusional. Anyways. You know the game Five Nights at Freddy's? Where you're just like waiting for 6 a.m. and just hoping and praying nothing goes wrong. It's 4.30 now. I'm almost done. Just prepping things for the day team. This is my patient list that you can't see. Classified information. I've been in and out of consciousness for the past like couple hours, maybe a total of like an hour or two of actual sleep, but we almost done. Powered by Wind Coffee Supply. I think, I don't know, but I don't know if this video is gonna be sponsored or not. If it is, cool. If it isn't, still use my code, they're cool. Cheers. Oh, uh, what's up, bro? The handoff of anesthesia interns on the surgery service. Happy 4.56 a.m. to you. Oh, the it's, it's literally the relief batter coming in. Oh, man. I, I did good. I set you up well, dude. That's good. I knew you would. I really did. Oh, end oh, of man. an era. Yeah. I'm sorry if a lot of this video doesn't really make Post call day, it's honestly the hardest thing to just figure out what to do with your day because you wake up at like two or three. <laughs> you're dehydrated, you're confused, you have no idea where you are in the world. So just to like recalculate, you just take a shower, get changed, make your bed, do all the like normal human being things. And then like usually when you get home at like seven o'clock in the morning, kind of just dump everything here. So like first thing I normally do is just clean up the place. Kevin, welcome back to the vlog. I'm feeling birdie juice. All right. Let's crack one well, and get it. This is my last post call day of surgery rotation. And one of the things we do is take advantage of the limited hours you have when you're conscious to get around in. 
especially with people who are on anesthesia. Living my best life. 24 hours in a week, mm -hmm. doesn't get any better. Meanwhile, I'm clocking like 75 plus every week. Hey, Anyways. you'll get there eventually. Anyways, <laughs> watch this drive. Dude. <laughs> And then the other part of post call days is catching up on filming videos like this for you guys. Kind of in conclusion, 24s are this really weird mix of efficiency, fun, and like the fastest growth you can have as a young doctor, I think of any experience so far. Which honestly doesn't even mean much to anybody because this is my first rotation. So first, efficiency. How much sleep you get is just straight up not up to you. And you have no idea the time frame between when you have downtime to prep notes, to do your post-op checks, to update the sign out in the chart. You have no idea how much time you have to do that before you get interrupted by a page or a text from a nurse going like, hey, somebody's blood pressure is out of control. Somebody's in an arrhythmia. Somebody needs more pain meds. Or hey, you need to come look at this wound. Some nights, you don't really have much of that. So you get to sleep, you get to prep notes, everything is super organized. But there, there are some nights where your phone literally does not stop ringing. And because you're the only intern there, besides the PGY3 consult resident, which they're most of the time dealing with completely other things, you're the lone doctor in-house for those patients, and you have to make those quick decisions and triage whether this is something immediate that I can handle, or this is something that I need to escalate and call my chief for. And at the beginning, and honestly still right now, you don't really know where those branch points are of like, hey, I can handle this by myself, or oh my god, I need to call my chief real quick. Safe thing is always let your chief know what's happening, but as time goes on, you feel comfortable putting out the smaller fires without constantly having to escalate it. Which is why I say it grows you really quickly as a doctor because you have to learn to be very confident in making split-second decisions out of pure necessity because again you're the only one there. It also really helps to have a great relationship with the nurses on the floor which thankfully I did. All the nurses were so so good and I couldn't have made it through my nights without them seriously. But when there are down times, it is kind of fun. You're still an intern. So like, for example, some of my co-residents brought me dinner because I literally hadn't eaten anything all day. Yeah. <laughs> or occasionally, you'll be on nights with one of your co-interns and like, if things are slow for both of you guys, you just kind of meet up and say, what's up? How are things? <laughs> I have a visitor. <laughs> On that we call together, man. We have some free time. It's crazy. No, we don't. I'm terrified at the moment. Yes, yeah, so I'm waiting for a chest X. And there it is. <laughs> so phone backgrounds are pretty cool. Yeah. That's literally me every single day of Ankh. <laughs> of Yeah, that's me too. What about you? Turn that around. Look at. Oh, he looks like he just woke up. He's chill. Dude, I've been here since <laughs> five. What are you talking about? Five in the morning. <laughs> Ankh is a good time. Here's where it doesn't seem for an entire hour. And then there's times where it just goes crazy. <laughs> where are we going? One. One. This is walking through Yale New Haven Hospital at 2.53 a.m. Pretty creepy. I actually know a couple of ghost stories too. Have you heard them? I'm so tired. <laughs> Welcome to the Healing Garden. <laughs> so as much as nights are kind of scary, they're also kind of fun because like you have the whole hospital to yourself and there's some, I don't know, there's a novelty to that. And at the end of the day, you do get a post-call day after these 24 hours. That's just kind of Yale's policy. And learning how to optimize those are a whole different skill set that I'm still learning. But the 24s weren't terrible. It is just very, very growing because it's probably the most amount of responsibility you have as an intern resident doctor. But by the end of it, you're like, 
huh, maybe I am starting to get the hang of it a little bit. <laughs> I hesitate saying that because of course you're never alone, you always have help when needed, but it does feel good when you're able to make those split second decisions and things actually like work, work out. And the patients all appreciate it, their families all appreciate it. And in those moments, probably for the first time in residency, I felt like a doctor. And it's a feeling that I'm definitely going to hold on to for a little bit as I transition through the separate services. Sorry if this video was all over the place, but at least I was able to explain and answer some questions about 24 hours. Let me know if you have any more questions in the comments. I'll try to answer them the best I can. And I will see you on the next rotation, Primary Care Clinic. I completely forgot what I was going to say. I just hit record. Yeah, that sums up. That sums up 24s. Some days are good, some days are rough, some days you leave with a smile on your face. Today was one of those good days.